Good evening, oh, folks. Welcome to the council meeting as of April 15th, 2024. If you will, Mr. Bridge, or are we having April do the roll call? It'll be it'll be me. All right. Okay. Um, are we ready? So roll call. Um, Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Council Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shammy. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilwoman Lind uh, Councilman Lindsay. <laughs> and Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. So we have five members present. All right, so we basically have a uh, quorum at that point. Invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this day and wonderful weather, Lord. Please be done this meeting tonight. Let that perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I need a motion for the action on the minutes of uh, April 1st. So moved. Second. Mrs. Eggleston and no. Uh, Kathy. Okay. We got a first by uh, Councilwoman Eggleston, a second okay. by Councilwoman Wright, if I heard correctly. Mm -hmm. And we'll go with the uh, vote count. Uh, Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Passes five to zero. Mm -hmm. So primarily we have a guest in the audience, Mr. Chad Johnson, the woodworker in regards to the council uh, diocese. So Mr. Johnson, we'll let you have the floor. Okay. So basically I'm here just to gather information on what it is exactly you guys would like to see, uh, whether you would like it raised, uh, the design, colors, things of that nature. Council, you had tasked me with di the dais, looking into that, so this is step one of that. Um, so for the past couple of weeks, I've been asking you guys to look for examples, bring color choices of wood, et cetera, so Mr. Johnson can take some ideas back with him. Um, so this is, like I said, step one of particularly many that's coming up. So he is here to listen to you guys' um, uh, wants and concerns. Um, if I might also suggest Mayor Cook um, for the ease of this project, um, if not tonight, not if maybe the next meeting since you have, when you have a full council. So maybe set a committee of council members to the side to, to work with myself and Mr. Johnson to complete the project. I think we can basically bounce a few ideas off Mr. Johnson as to what the present uh, folks would like to see. Sure. I know we've got a copy of one from Milton. I picked up one that was on a uh, half semicircle about what we've got here. Uh, is that something I can pass out for everyone? Yeah. It is. I think I've, got, I've only got three copies, so. Keep one for your board. I'll let you do not your one, share one. one. Yeah. Whichever. <laughs> I think primarily one of the things that I would like to see is the, I guess the word is participation by the audience moved up to possibly over here on the end. And that's not necessarily on the diocese, but I think it would enhance council to possibly, since we do have an acoustical problem in this location, to possibly hear a little bit better. So that's my only concern, and welcome Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> Apparently I forgot what time it was. <coughs> but primarily, does anybody else have any concerns or anything we'd like to share with the gentleman? 
<coughs> we have, uh, this council has pondered many silly things. This has to be the worst. There's no reason we should put ourselves above anyone else so that, as Mr. Mayor said, we can look down on the community. There's nobody up here that's any better than anybody out there or anybody else in the city. We have no reason to be raising ourselves to a higher level. None whatsoever. Anyone else? Go ahead, Ken. I'll agree with Mr. Graham on that statement. Um, what I would like to see, though, is I think we need to focus it on it being the mayor's court more so than it be in our court. Um, that's the public eye, in my opinion, more so than this one. And maybe we could have a small stand just for the mayor to raise up a center table just for him. Because every court I've ever been to, it does have, not the mayor, I said mayor, judge, I'm sorry. It does have the judge up higher. So, yeah, that makes sense to me. I like this plan because it's straight, and I know doing curves with wood is pricey, and I, I really want to keep the price as low as possible. That's real important to me. And I like the idea of splitting three and three on both sides. It doesn't show this in that picture, but there's another arm on this that's on the other side, and I think it's kind of nice, but that's just my, you know, everybody else has an opinion. And it does have a podium center front, which for the um, judge, it would have his witness or whoever, whatever you call them, standing there in front of the group. Magistrate. Magistrate, I don't know these words, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. The acoustics problem is easily be solved with a small sound system. Um, all we'd have to do is plug it into the magic box back there, the speaker back to the back. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else? Bill, you got anything on this? No, apparently they don't like it. So <laughs> every every city council I've ever been to, every city I've ever been to, the council has had a diocese. It isn't looking down upon the people. It's so the people in the back, if this place would ever be full, could see us. Uh, that's the reason for a diocese and a judge or magistrate is always sitting above and looking down. Uh, so the, the, with all due respect to Mr. Graham, if we was on a diocese, I don't believe, well, I know I speak for myself, I would not look like I was above the citizens because the citizens elects us, we represent them, and it would better, in my opinion, serve the citizens if they could see us when we're talking, if they, the place would be full. And this place has been full before in the past. Been nothing but standing room. Uh, you're sitting up here and people standing around or whatnot, or even people sitting here when we have 30 or 40, 50 people sitting. People in the back are going like this, trying to see, to see who's talking, see who's doing what. Uh, I, for one, would be in favor of a diocese. It always comes down to money <laughs> and how much money. And I, I would have to agree with Mrs. Wright that a straight one would be better than a curve, although something like this would be nice. So when she's sitting here, she can see Mr. Bond or Mr. Shammy uh, at the other end. Uh, when it's straight, you have to lean in front of other people to, to see who's speaking and, and to look at it. So that's my two cents. Have we did even discussed cost about any of this? Okay. Mr. Bob, okay, thank you. <laughs> my, my only thing is I agree with Mr. Grimm and Mrs. Wright as far as the perception, um, you know, when we're raised above uh, of the audience or whatever not to think of ourselves as being higher than them. <clears throat> but I agree, you know, Mr. Lindsay brings up a good point. It does make it easier for people to see what's going on up here, but is raised a little bit. Um, I agree that, you know, the judge, the magistrate needs to be elevated. Um, that is a um, position that, that does 
garner some extra respect and um, I think that gives that but I'm big on minimal cost I don't want to spend much money on this myself I um, I'm big on results and not so much on looks so um, I think what we're doing if we're doing our job correctly that speaks louder than what we look like I think so I would you like paint I, you know, I would have a hard time if if I was the only vote on this. I would have a hard time spending money on this personally. So. Anyone else? Go ahead, Peg. I, mean, I like the layout that you handed out, which is pretty much the same as the ones I found that I liked. <clears throat> but um, I do believe that if we're gonna move mayor's court here that the magistrate does need to be elevated and it's going to serve dual purposes uh, i mean for any of us to think because we're sitting on a diocese that we were better than anybody in this city there's something wrong with the person that thinks that I personally don't think that by being up approximately a foot at the most, we're going to be any better than any other citizen. But I think it also gives the, kind of the audience a little bit of perceptive of what is going on and the avail availability of being able to see who's speaking and the possibility of knowing what's going on in the, in the room. That's my thought. Other than that, what's your pleasure? This is a council project. I did my job. I brought the guy here to talk to you guys. What you guys do to move forward is strictly up to you. My personal opinion on the matter, and as a matter of your city manager opinion, is you guys should move forward with some sort of way to make yourself a little bit more presentable. Um, so. Um, Are you talking about suit and die? No, I'm talking about where council meets as a oh, diet. You know? So. We're gonna have a lot of attention, people watching YouTube are trying to sell houses, you know, so I think it's just best if we put our best foot forward um, and do, do it a responsible way that council's um, uh, okay with that money versus what the end result's going to be. But I think there needs to be some, definitely some sort of improvement. Um, this has been like this for basically ever since the solar house has been built. Prior to that, you guys are in the basement of a church. Um, it's just not a professional governing body um, and that that would definitely alleviate that by doing this and again just making sure that we can uh, take part of this to allow it to remain uh, rentable because we still get quite a bit of people who rent this one it's a fair trade-off between the more expensive one with the kitchen and then pe some people do like this one because they don't need all the bells and whistles so a lot to kind of fit into a shoebox for sure for you guys I definitely def definitely think it needs to be done uh, like I said, this is step one out of many. Um, I think, I think the big hurdle today was raised or not, um, and I think that may be, will hopefully be alleviated. You know how you guys handle it moving forward. I think that you know, like I said, maybe form a committee of multiple people up there on the council that way you guys can work uh, under you know not as a quorum, maybe three people, and that way you can streamline and come back. That way we can have a streamlined way to communicate with me, and then I can have a streamlined communicate with Mr. Johnson as well. Do I hear any other comments in regard to it? If not, I have we got three people who would like to serve on the committee to facilitate this. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. I move the abandonment project. Is that a motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Well, let me get caught up here. So is motion to abandon the dais project? Yes, I have. Do we have a second? a second? Second. So we got a first by Mr. Grin, and the second by who? Mr. Grin, well, I'm looking for a second. Apparently, it died for lack of a second. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I would move that uh, 
we instruct the city manager to get us some more information, especially on cost for the various ones that council had talked about. Uh, most of them that I've seen in other cities, looks like this. Looks like this one here, that. they're, they're kind of curved. It? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, they're kind of curved, so people over here can see over there. Right. So, you know, I, I made that uh, comment earlier. So I would move that we ask the city major to uh, talk with this gentleman about cost and bring something back to us. Yes, sir? Sorry to interrupt your motion, but I, we need to know some more information from the council to come to a good conclusion about cost. What type of wood do you guys want? Do you want dark? Do you want light? Do you want oak? Do you, uh, want, do you want it to be curved? Do you want it to be straight? Do you want it to be raised? That's why I said the committee okay. might be the best way to do it. Let me, uh, let me withdraw that motion for a minute. Okay. If I may have the floor, sir. Go ahead. Sir, what is the normal cost? Have you done a diocese before for other cities? I have not, no. Okay. Uh, is it cheaper to bend the wood or would you use straight wood? It would be cheaper to go straight. We could, we could build it the way the tables are set Something right now. like this? Yeah. So it could be built in three sections, sections yeah. and then attached? Yes. And I was understanding that it might need to be able to be disassembled. So keeping it like that would make it easier to disassemble if you needed to. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure why it would need disassembled unless we moved a new building at some point, <laughs> point. which could, could possibly happen. Uh, hopefully a few years down the road, long after I'm gone. Uh, plywood and paint would work, right? Any color paint? It's whatever you guys decide. I mean, I'm looking to do the cheapest thing. We Not the cheapest thing, but yeah. to go as inexpensive as possible yeah. in my mind. And I think it would satisfy the Councilman Bond also on the expense. Uh, so, I don't know. <coughs> Mr. Johnson, just I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. More than I just did? I think... You have the one diagram with the basic layout. Mm -hmm. Do we have a ballpark? And again, this I'm not going to hold you to it. Just a ballpark estimate on that. I do not have a ballpark. It would really be determined on whether it's raised, whether it's on the floor, uh, types of wood. Plywood would be cheaper way to go. But unless I really know exactly what you want to see and then put together a quote, I, I really can't give you a cost. I guess I'm, go ahead, uh, Kathy. I was hoping that we could do that committee because if we could narrow it down more, maybe even make two or three plans and let him give us prices for those plans, I, I'm all for putting a better appearance out, that's fine. But I want to do it cheaply, to use the same word again. Um, I just, let's get a committee together and, and work it out between the three of us and then hopefully we could join, have him come. You could come if you wanted and actually kind of get a little closer to what we're asking for. I don't want to spend $20,000 on the thing. You know, I, I mean, if we could do it for five, I'd be okay. happy, uh, honestly. And, okay. and 20, 20 grand is almost in the ballpark. <laughs> I know, You, you guys have to budget out some money for this. If you I guys know. want a $5,000 project, then I don't think Mr. Johnson's going to be, his capabilities are a little bit above that, you know, so. Um, the city's doing well financially. Part of this investing in when is your taxpayer money is put back into stuff like this. Um, so you guys probably should be expecting to spend anywhere to ballpark at least, I would say, 25 to 30 K at minimum. On the high side, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, they're not cheap. If we were to do one like these tables are set up so they can be disassembled, we could just do the centerpiece elevated. Well, that was my thought, was that in the event that we were to hold court out here, the magistrate would just have his diocese up here, the other two, if they're movable. And I assume we're going to talk about a movable diocese on these two ends and just have the magistrate alone on his own during court session. Let, go ahead, Bill. If we're going to spend twenty or $30,000 on a diocese, 
uh, I think the whole diocese should be the same level. The, like I said, if you've never been to any other city and seen their diocese uh, that the magistrates uh, use in these other cities or the city courts, they all look pretty much the same. I think it would look really odd not to have it all the same height for council and a magistrate. And that would give the appearance that the mayor, whoever that mayor is, is above everybody else. My, Since we were talking about being above people. I don't know whether you took me wrong. My philosophy is all one level. This is going to be a separate diocese for the magistrate. Well, it would be three pieces. Three pieces. Right, but it all be the so same. that on the court day, this one and that one could be moved out of the way. You would have only the magistrate sitting here. That would be an awful lot of work, I think, to move right. the other two because you'd have to right. semi disassemble it because it's bolted together, uh, and the and the magistrate sitting above, regardless if these are here or not, is still the magistrate, and he should be elevated. I guess I'm back to square one. Let's, I'll make a motion. We appoint a committee of three. It's not. Okay. Second that. I have a second. I had a first by Mayor Cook and a second by Councilwoman Eggleston. Yeah. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Vice Mayor Eggleston, I'm sorry. Thank you. <coughs> Councilman Bond? Sure. Councilman Grimm? I can't be on it, but. No? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Councilman Lindsay? You skipped the vice mayor? Councilwoman Eggleston, will you have a question in a second? That's really it's not important. It's, as long as we get the yes. vote count recorded, we're good. Yes? Yes. Mayor, uh, Councilman Lin I'm Lindsay. I'm not a mayor, but Councilman thank you for the compliment. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Uh, that passes. It looks like four to one. Do I have three volunteers? I will volunteer. Mr. Bond. <laughs> Kathy, Mrs. Eggleston, and you. <laughs> no, uh, Mr. Bond has. No. Let's schedule it. Do you want to be the oddball out? You don't let me be the oddball out. Why not? <laughs> the, uh, They'll keep them grounded. I, I guess you'd have to figure out when the meetings would be held. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time, but if it was on certain days, I guess I could. But I, I would hate to commit to it because I never know. Well, I guess it, it winds up being Kathy, Vice Mayor, and myself. Mr. Mayor, what Go about ahead. A member of the community? Yeah. I'm sorry. What about a member of the community? We could have yeah. a member of the community. I think so uh, Mrs. Craybacher volunteered. I think the community voice is important. Yes. Well, let's do this. If you want to do it that way, put Kathy and Vice Mayor on the committee. We'll ask for a community volunteer on Facebook. If you get a community volunteer, there's it's not fine. One, there's not, not one here that would like to do it? Mm -hmm. Is there anyone, anyone here that would like to do it? If you can't find it, I'll do it. I'm in the same seat you are. <laughs> Mr. Kraybacher? Yeah. You have your three. All right. So who, that's a dais committee, so we need a motion to approve this. I approve it. On the members, at least. No. So moved. Second. So moved for the members. <laughs> so we got Mrs. Wright as the first. Who's the second? Mrs. Wright. Who is the first? I motion. I'm sorry, Mr. Lindsay. <coughs> Mr. Bond? What is Councilman this? Bond, I'm sorry. This is for the, uh, to accept the members of the committee. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yes. Councilman Grimm? No. Mayor Cook? Yes. 
Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Four to one, that passes. Mr. Johnson, I appreciate your being here tonight. And we'll be hearing from this committee and seeing what they can come up with. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we need to break the rules of council to go into that BZA meeting? Nope, it's already on the agenda. All right. So then I guess we'll go into this zoning appeals meeting in regard to safe and sound. Mr. Craybock wanted to say something. I'm sorry? Mr. Craybock wanted to say something. I just want to make one suggestion. I think we should set up, you know, come back and report within a certain period of time. I think four weeks would be more than enough. That's that's that would be for you and your committee to decide the first time you guys meet. Okay. Yeah, and then we can put you under committee reports on the agenda when you're ready to come back and talk about this council. I think that's awesome. Thank you for volunteering. We appreciate that. Yeah, you do. No. Are you going to lead out on this uh, BZA meeting? I'm sorry. Are you going to? Brief us on this BZA. Uh, I can read the staff portion for you. Have you guys read the packet? We're ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hensley, would you like to take the podium? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hensley is an applicant. He is owner of Safe and Sound Outfitters located at 1701 Addison New Carlisle Road. An adjacent property across street at 1720 uh, Addison New Carlisle Road. He's seeking a sign variance on a denied sign permit application submitted to the city on February 12, 2024. City Ordinance 1290.17 prohibits, prohibits businesses to erect or install sign, a sign advertising a business on a vacant lot where a principal business structure is not located. Uh, this variance request has not been granted in the past for other businesses. Uh, Mr. Uh, staff recommendation is the Board of Zoning Appeals to make a motion to following uh, tonight as follows. Vote to deny the variance that would permit the ground sign for business to be erected on a vacant property solely due to the applicant not meeting all the requirements of section 1244.06b, the City of New Carlisle codified ordinances. There is a uh, list of one, two, three, four, five, six conditions that has to be met for an order for a variance to be approved. Unfortunately, uh, this applicant did not meet all those criteria. Uh, they are uh, listed in the packet for the council to review. It is a pretty lengthy document. Um, Mr. Hensley has submitted a narrative on his behalf. Uh, Mr. Hensley, you can uh, tell the Board of Zoning Appeals your uh, stance on this particular um, subject matter. Can you state my name? I'm sorry? Do I need to state my name or sure. anything? Uh, Mark Hensley at uh, 5040 Studebaker Road, Tip City, Ohio, 45371. Um, we own the property against, um, in the Addison V, the small portion, and then we also own the safe and sound portion that we're currently on. Our struggle against this is we'll never be able to make that the same property because there's a road that splits us. But that that little portion of the V would always be with that property. It's, it's useless for anything else. You couldn't build on it if you wanted to. I don't believe it's too small. Um, it's 0.17 of an acre. All we want to do is just move our sign out into, um, you know, obeying the uh, offsets of both roads, and depending on what's going to happen with Addison. I, mean, I know you guys already have it on your uh, website as a, as a um, uh, pr pr prospective plan of what uh, how you're going to close Addison down so it's really not a thoroughfare road if we were to move our sign to the north of the parking lot we're only asking to move the sign 50 feet which is probably the length of this building I don't think anyone else in the city could ever um, do that it's just the way Addison's set up and it's the, the severe angle that it's cut at and I think that was the only one that I was missing was I could not get that deeded to the same property as safe and sound because of the road. Mr. Go ahead. Uh, I guess this question is really for the city manager. At some point when we vacate that road, uh, 
always come up. I hate that when my mind goes blank after I start a conversation. <laughs> uh, I'll yield, and if I think of it, if it comes back to me, I'll ask the question. Oh, if we vacate that road, then moving the sign out would not be a problem, correct? It would still be because it's on a vacant parcel of land. The issue is not the, the, the it's not the issue is not the road splitting the two parcels of land. The does, issue is that does that have an address? The second parcel? It's vacant. There's nothing. It's just on vacant. It. Okay. Yeah. And that's what the that's what needs the variance from is to put the sign on a vacant land. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Should council? I mean, should the board approve it though? It, what it is, it wouldn't give precedence for everything else in the future. Right. You know, Mr. Hensley's in a unique situation. He should be there. Um, that's for sure, um, but the sign where the moving the signs not a detriment to the business. If it was a detriment to the business, then maybe that could be looked at differently. But there really is no administrative gray area. It's just pretty black and white because of the six criteria that we have to say yes or no to. Mm -hmm. There's no room for really interpretation. And I spoke with Mr. Hens on this because he's a great business owner in town. It's unfortunate when you have to have these stances. But it's pretty black and white, given the six questions that we had to answer eternally before we send it, submit it to you guys. Okay. If I may have one more question. Go ahead. Mr. Hensley, if this is denied, will it impede your business at any level or any way? Well, Even after to, the road is closed? Probably. It's tough to say. I mean, the road's not closed. No one can speculate how the road's going to be closed. The property's to the north of me. We don't know what's going to happen to those properties that are in the uh, central business district. There's, there's too many questions to ask. We just figured since we owned it, why not, why not move the sign and get a little bit more, uh, get a little bit more exposure out on 235 since we're always gonna maintain that property as safe and sound. Right. The, uh, I think what the problem is, it's a separate parcel, even though it's in that V shape and our planning rules and regulations, I think, are pretty clear. Uh, I don't know. Is that gunfire? No, it's something popping, but I don't know what it is. I hope it ain't my truck. Uh, so I'm done, sir. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Graham. You second. Mr. Hensley, there's nothing against you and your family. You guys have been incredible supporters of the community for that. We're eternally grateful. But that nothing like this has ever come, come up to the city before. Mm -hmm. If we were to approve this, this would set a precedent. Mm -hmm. And anybody else down the pike would say, well, you gave it to Hensley, why not give it to us? What I would strongly suggest, keep an eye on what goes on with Addison. We're going to be closing it off. We don't know when. We don't know where. Now, let me... Correct me if I'm wrong, but if we close it back far enough, you would be able to join two properties together? No. Mm -hmm. There's a road going through that? No, I mean, if we close Later. it off back farther. Oh, you guys could probably vacate it if you choose to do so, but it might be a little complicated given the other frontages there with the other houses. So um, it's, it's a roll of the dice, to be honest with you. Can I say something, sir? Do you feel comfortable? not having council or BZA vote on this and see where it goes? Because if it, that might be better strategy wise for both parties involved really. Because of the unknown with Addison, New Carlisle would come, if we vacate it, if they vote no on your variance then they won't be able to hear it again for either just six months to a year. Whereas if they just let it die for unknown, you don't move your sign. And then three months down the road, if something changes, then you can come back. And you don't have to worry about that limitation off the variance. That was denied. Close. That's yeah, that's a strategy yeah. question for you. Ken. Okay. Yeah, along that same line with that road closing, there's only one person between you and the drive-through. Is that correct? I own it too. Huh? I own that as well. You own that house that's too. That's correct. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So if it did, if the road did end before that, then it would be easy for you to do that then. Yes, that's what we're thinking, but we don't have, 
you know, there's no one that's, that, that has purchased that property yet, whether it be two parcels or one parcel or where it's going to close Addison down. You could get two food chains in there, but it, they would require Addison. They want Addison as an easement and then some of my safe and sound frontage right. for parking. So, but no one's approached us on that yet to say, hey, here's or approached you guys, first of all, to say that. But then you would be able to shut Addison off at the old drive through. That, that is actually what I was kind of thinking we would do. Maybe put a circle in there and then you could own the property except for the circle. Or maybe you could donate a little land to you and we could allow you to, you know, join. And I think you own everything across from my entrance anyway. So we would take it. Well, I mean, you guys would have to let us go out. And then there's one house. Yeah, that one house. To the south of me. Mm -hmm. They would just come out and exit right on to 235, I guess, because it would be Addison would be shut down. That would be the only stipulation in the closure of Addison that, that that's they, difficult yeah, yeah. exactly and, and then I think they should have an opinion on that because they're exactly. not yeah. that's not it's not very attractive for that party either that's correct so but I think it just might be well to to sit a while and maybe you know we know what you want maybe we could work something out between you us and them yeah it's fine with me make it happen You don't get uh, I guess this is more for the city manager. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> if we put this on hold, would he have to go through this process again to come before the BZA board? I think it was more than six months. He'll have to, yeah, but I don't think he would be at an issue with that. Could we reimburse his money? Mm, no. 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 Just a question. Mm -hmm. uh, are you good with that, Mr. Hensley, waiting to see what happens? And if it's within six months, if I understand the manager correctly, you will not have to pay again. But it's after that six months, my understanding is you'd have to go through the process again. That's fine. So I normally wouldn't ask somebody before us this question. What do you want us to do? <laughs> well, no, I mean, as far as, as holding <coughs> off, I know what you want us to do, and uh, I'm not sure that would happen this evening. But if you want it to hold off, I will make such a motion. Well, if, if anything, if I could have something in it as far as time, I know McDonald's is breaking ground, or from what I understand, is going to break ground in a month. When they break ground, those properties to the north next to the drive through are going to go like wildfire. I mean, there's going to be people bidding on those just to be next to McDonald's. So I would, I would ask if I could have more than six months on that to see where it goes, because it's going to take McDonald's three to four months to build. Right. Do we and then have see the ability how, to do that as they can wait as long as you want? Yeah. That's well, he's saying about the 125 bucks or something, whatever it costs. Yeah, it's like six months or something like that. If you don't do anything with the six months, you got to start the process over. Again. Yeah. But you applied, the reason he applied, we sent out the legal advertising, we can't lose that. Right. So it's 125 now, and yeah, if he comes back. The, oh. the process would have to start over. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Wait a minute, I got Go ahead for what? <laughs> I think I have Mr. Graham up next. Did you have something else? Yeah, uh, I think the best bet is that we can see what we do with Addison. Um, like I said, we will be shutting off, but we don't know where. And I'm sure with citizen input, we would listen to that on where we shut it off. As for the house to the south of you, a little access lane from Addison would probably not be a problem. Am I correct? I'm not answering that. I'm not a traffic engineer and I don't have anything in front of me and we don't own a lot of land out there. The vast majority is owned by other people. So it's going to take a really partnership to come out with every interested party ending up happy at the end of it. Okay, Bill, I think you're up. For what? I don't know. I already asked my question. So. <laughs> All right, you're done. <laughs> Uh, I, I have one question. Okay. If if we either table this tonight or turn it down, what are the chances of uh, 
Mr. Hensley putting a temporary sign up there, much like the yellow billboards. I have to look at our sign code, see if it's permitted or not. Yeah. Have to no sign. Have to no, we have to look at the sign code. I don't. Uh, I don't. I have to look at the sign code before I say yes or no to that. Temporary signs are usually limited to 30 days at a time. But really, what you're doing is you're skirting the code to allow a sign in the meantime. So, but yeah, usually temporary signs are just 30 days at a time, for like three times a year. So, do the math, and that would be like 90 days. I mean, I think to answer the question, I already have a sign. The sign's already out there. It's it's within 35 feet of 235. The issue we have is is where you close Addison down. We can't turn semis in now if you close Addison down because they always come in from that. They're heading north to come into the building because there's telephone poles. If we move the sign, we're able we can pave the front of our easement and let them swing those semis in. That was the biggest issue behind moving this because I don't think I can get AES to move the telephone poles as slow as they were hooking me up to power. <laughs> yeah. I would move to table this for no more than six months that will give the city no wait a minute you guys can't do that you have to vote on we can't I, would, I would he needs he, has he to. needs to make the suggestion otherwise you guys have to yeah, yes or no okay he seems like i, I withdraw my you guys are it bound seems like this. you have to withdraw this otherwise we have to vote on it and then you can't do anything for what six months or a year or something like that. So if you want to withdraw your petition or your your BZA request, yeah, I think I'm going to re uh, withdraw it and, and hold on to it. It's still yeah. good for what six months, I think. Well, me, we, I well, I can work something out with Mr. Yeah, Hensley. that's not you, an issue. You two work it out. We'll get it worked out. And I'm sure we'll see you again as soon. There's too many unknowns to what's going to be happening. Exactly. So I. You know, I, I appreciate what you're doing or want to do. I think it's just a little early until we know some other factors in it. So with that, I thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. So basically the petition has been withdrawn. He withdrew it, yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Bridge, I believe that you're up. All right, let me get my spot here. Under city manager report, we'll start with our service report with our assistant city manager, director of public service, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, mayor, members of the council, member, uh, citizens of the city of New Corral. Uh, public works departments have installed new park and lease rules at all the parks except for Carlisle Park. Once they complete phase one of the project, we'll get that sign installed over there as well. Uh, street crews are also performing, uh, getting their dirt patcher ready uh, for potholes. We'll be starting that in the next couple weeks to do citywide work. The emulsion is in at the uh, storage unit that we go to, so uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting everything ready. Uh, we're preparing for the parks and streetscape improvements for 2024. As you had probably already noticed, we got some plantings in at the city building, plantings at Smith Park, so they're already going. Uh, the, one of the next big projects is the baskets downtown. And we're working on a project right now with baskets, banners, flags, and trying to incorporate some organizations that also utilize our pools. We're working on a sweeping schedule based on the arrival of new equipment, which right now I'm hearing it is new early June to mid-June. Um, once the initial sweeping is completed, um, also then the city will be painting curbs throughout the city. Under the water department, uh, we're prepping the pool for the 2024 season. They have been down there doing some uh, various work already. We already do have our paint and some materials already on order. Uh, well 5 is to be cleaned in late April. That is the one back by one of the ball fields. Uh, the lead and water service main project, we are done with the survey. We are uh, starting into the preliminary design right now. We're hoping that sometime early fall that I will have the agreement to sign for the contractor to bring them on board. Um, we just have to have the agreement uh, completed uh, by December of 2024. So under sewer department, um, we're just performing general maintenance. I did meet with uh, Mr. Bridge and Carrie May, our wastewater superintendent. I've got calls in and we are discussing 
some alternatives to what we found out on the study. So uh, once we get some of that information back and see if there's a couple other avenues possible to do with these um, housing developments in our current plan, um, we'll be reaching back out to Mr. Bridge and then we'll update council further. Under 2024 road resurfacing and uh, reconstruction projects, uh, it's currently out for bid for the Clark County road resurfacing contract to resurface West Washington with two ADA ramps and Villa Drive uh, with six ADA ramps and replacements, eight ADA ramps in the Willowick spinning area, and then um, we will probably we will be getting some. Well, I'm sorry, I had thought them together. So that's that part for as far as paving contract under the Clark County striping contract. Uh, we got involved this year to take Lake Road, Jefferson Street, and Smith Boulevard and get those double yellow lines um, repainted. Our crews in-house will do the channelizing lines and arrows at the various intersections. Uh, Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two, they just completed seed and straw uh, Friday, and then they completed the manhole and water valve adjustments today. Um, I got a check on AC band other than that, and it will be uh, complete. Uh, the City of New Carlisle has been awarded the CDBG grant, as you know, for the Carlisle Park um, project. If you go out there and want to take a look, the new swings are up, the mulch is in, the sidewalk is done. The only thing that is not done is the basketball court and the hoops. Um, we're going to take a look at once the project gets complete to possibly add a um, chain link fence at one end uh, to help with the case that we get, like, as they call them, air balls or balls rolling off the court from the potential of going out towards Church Street. Uh, the, and then on the ODNR Nature Works grant at the pool, our three gazebos uh, are on order. I went down this past Friday to order the gazebos and the, um, the metal roof color. The company who will build these on site uh, will be sending us drawing, drawings and then I will get with the concrete contractor uh, to get that scheduled. Uh, the goal right now is to definitely get it in before uh, opening day. Um, it'll depend on uh, trying to get these uh, footers in and to get them built on site. The initial ones we were looking at had the wooden floors, but honestly didn't really think about splinters and stuff like that, how many people were really down there in barefoot, that type of thing. So uh, they're gonna go on a concrete floor. Um, let's see, Metronet currently, um, has not entered any of the residential areas except for the old section. They've got their main ring done and they're in the old section currently. I did receive some complaints of another company working on behalf of Spectrum, doing work up in the Plumwood, Spinning, and Applewood area. So I've been in contact with the company out of Columbus doing that work on their behalf and supposedly they're getting their areas cleared up of trash and sinkholes that they had of where they've been working. But as far as Metronet, they have not been up there. They are very good at what they do. Um, their work is dirty for that first half of the day and usually by the end of the day, they got the holes filled back in and you never know that they were there. So, and then that's not their final restoration. They'll have a little touch up to do as well, but they're, they're moving pretty, uh, pretty quick. Um, I applied for a CDBG critical infrastructure grant to do Rawson from Scott Street to Kennison, that would be phase one in 2025. That would be full depth reconstruction, full curb replacement, all new storm, all new drive approaches. The estimated construction cost is to be $472,160, with the city matching 10% of $47,216. And then we also pay for engineering services, which would be about $25,000. Keep your fingers crossed, we've gotten them for the last four years, or no, well, the last four submissions straight, which is over the last eight years. Um, it's now not possible, but I have right here just signed a CDBG application to do a phase two to the Carlisle Park, and that would to be complete the rest of the si dilapidated sidewalk, um, possibly add a driveway and a parking lot with paved markings or uh, stripe striping, and then a pole with possibly an added light and security cameras on there. I did submit with my pictures, even though it's not our building, but it is the graffiti back on the back of Dollar General. I added that as a picture of why we might want some security. This project is not critical infrastructure. It's out of the typical allocation portion of CDBG. 
So this is this part is a little more competitive in the way that I'm going against Springfield Township, uh, Moorfield, uh, city not not city of Springfield, South Charleston. There's a few other places that I can compete with, but it's a smaller project, and they might be able to fit it in again this year, like they did with the current Carlisle Park. And that is currently all I have in the report. I can answer any questions on the report or anything else that comes to mind. Go ahead, Ken. Um, a suggestion to put a mural on the side of that building that would probably decrease a lot of the tagging and stuff like that. If you had a very nice mural painted on, that would be nice. I don't know what they cost, but just an idea. Would it go on the Dollar General building? Yeah, you just have to get permission from them, yeah. Then they'd quit tagging it probably. The, what the studies show, the more effective way to prohibit tagging, they're called actually graffiti boards, and you install them in your park and they're meant to be tagged. Mm -hmm. They're great. A lot of people use them. So instead of go tagging the buildings, they'll go tag that big old board. <coughs> um, that's a good alternative as well. And do you what paint them every year or every? You go for a food to paint over. You can you come put your little sign up there. Someone can come right behind you and paint over it. Hmm. So point of them. Yep. The called graffiti boards. Deterrence. That would be cool too. It would. <laughs> Anybody else have anything from Kitco? Go ahead, Peg. What would it entail to make the city water softer? Um, paying for more salt. Salt takes. And it's, the, it's one of the most expensive parts of our whole treatment process is softening. Actually, it's the most expensive piece. Um, right now, we soften down to about 180 parts per million. We're near one of the lowest. Home, home water softening is zero. We're at 140. Our raw is 385. So um, we're, we're below half. So it's enough where you get the aesthetic taste of some minerals in it. But yes, it's soft enough that you get good uh, suds from your soaps, laundry detergents. And hard enough to get scopes to go and stains all over your everything. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Kitko, Metronet, what's the percentage that they have given you on completion so far? Um, we haven't got a percentage. As a matter of fact, tomorrow I have a meeting at 9, our monthly meeting, so I can kind of find out where they're at. Right now they're about halfway done with the old section, so if that was 25% of the town, they're probably 15, 20% done of the city, maybe 15. I know they, uh, over in Taravello, that area, there's been nothing done on the poles, which is above ground, but I just thought I'd ask. I'd ask a couple of comments from neighbors. Yep. All righty, Mr. Bridge. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Kitko. Moving on to city manager report under fire and EMS, our fire chief, chief uh, Steve Trusty. <coughs> Mayor, council of citizens. For the month of March, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 94 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to five fire-related fire calls, six good intent service calls, one false alarm. We had four EMS calls answered either by Pike Township, Bethel Clark, or Bethel, Miami, uh, for Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township, three mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark. At the time of the, this report, our run total was 411. We are now at 433, which gives right now we are averaging over 100 runs a month. Uh, we still have pre smoke alarms for citizens. All they have to do is contact the station or come by. Any questions for the chief? All right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Fire Chief. Moving on with the planning and uh, the city manager report. Planning department stats, uh, total violations uh, for the past two week period. Uh, 37 violations, 15 total uh, properties violated, uh, average violations per property is 2.47, and we have closed uh, 16 violations. Uh, the police report, we had 237 calls taken, 43 reports, 44 assists, 20 criminal arrests, uh, 4 felony arrests, 8 misdemeanor arrests, 8 warrants, 42 traffic stops. Uh, 23 traffic warnings, 18 moving citations, 1,276 business checks, uh, five code enforcement follow-ups, four traffic crashes, and uh, four parking citations. 
And for the finance report, let me get that here. Our uh, month, month revenue received was $1,259,930. And when our expenses for the month of, month of March was $640,703. For our income tax collections, we are up 2.7% from this point in time last year. Uh, overall, for the month, we are down 8.1%. Uh, and following this is also your mayor's court uh, receipts and also your uh, statement of cash and in your check report and ultimately your revenue and expenditure report as well. With that being said, I will, if there is no questions, I will have a motion to approve the finance report. So moved. Second. Oh, hold on, Chris, I'm not ready. I have a motion and a second. Um, Who is the finance first? Finance report, if you have, anybody have anything else? Who was the second, I'm sorry. Okay. Six. Six. Councilman Bond? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Grimm? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. And that passes five to zero. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept the uh, court. Okay, second. Next report. Second. Six to zero, thank you. And Eagleston was the second. And we'll go with the vote count. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Oh, I'm missing. Councilwoman Vice Mayor Eagleston? Yes. Passes six to zero. Uh, moving on to the uh, city manager report under informational items. Executive assistant to the city manager. I know this was from the last meeting, but I was not here because I was ill. Uh, Ms. April Lowry won the job. Um, so I did post it on LinkedIn. We had quite a few applicants. I brought on my top three. Uh, Ms. Lowry uh, shined in her interview process. Last <coughs> week was her first week. She's already hit the ground running, so made some great contributions to some signs we're going to be putting up, um, and then ideas with those signs as well. Um, last week was kind of a whirlwind, so we're trying to pace it out with her. Uh, today she was at the city building, kind of just getting ins and outs of that, because it's going to help a bit, help her answer some questions better in the future. Um, but she has been an absolute great addition to the administrative team, and I know that she's going to just do some wonderful, wonderful things that we have coming up that we're going to start working on to present to council that's going to engage your citizens a lot more. Okay. So again, April, congratulations, and uh, we're welcome to have your board. Thank you. And moving on to city manager board, I kind of kept it light because it looked like it was a very busy meeting today with the agenda. Water billing, I'm sorry, council retreat and strategy days for in-person sessions. So this is where we're going to go and just sit in a room together and it's open to the public and we're going to listen to what Mr. Pete says and he's going to, you know, talk about, you know, the retreat and all that stuff and he's going to formulate based off what you guys have to say as well. <clears throat> so we had about three days in June that we could work with. I had to take June 29th out because that's a very busy day for us here. That's when our community garage sale and also community fireworks on. Um, so that is still on there. I just assume no one would have that availability, so I did take it off. So it is up there, should council want to meet on that day? It's just gonna be a very busy day. So with that being said, we're looking at June 1st or June 22nd. We're also gonna to wanna to know of a location. Do you guys just wanna keep it simple and keep it here in town? Um, or try to go somewhere outside of town, but relatively close to allow your public to attend? Um, any guidance on that would be greatly appreciated. <coughs> Comments? Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. I say do it as inexpensive as possible, keep it here in town, do it at one of the shelters here, whatever. Fire station, should there yeah, be booked? Whatever, yeah, I don't know what. I'm sure he's fine with that. We use your station. Yeah. Do you have a preference on the 1st or 22nd? Ideally, this is the reason why I kind of wanted to shoot for June. We really, I really want this to be done before we hit our budget seasons. So tax budget starts in July. Soon after that, we're going to be going in the capital. And I think it'd be a good thing if we had a better understanding of what we're all doing as a group, if we can have it done prior to the budget starts. Because then maybe we have a finance committee established by then, and they're going to have a lot, lot more to say on that budget. Anybody else? 
Go ahead. I would have a problem with you first. My uh, son from Hawaii is expected to be in town that week. Bring him along. <laughs> Maybe he can add some intelligence to the group. That he could, because he's a highly intelligent man. I've never met him, I saw his Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So June 1st is out for you. He's like high up in the military. Anybody else have a comment? Sounds like it's the 22nd. Second. Is the 22nd then going to be suitable? Okay. Then uh, do I hear a motion for the 22nd? And do you want to do it at one of the shelter houses here? I move we do it this 22nd at one of the shelter houses or the fire station. We'll have to find a location in town. Both shelter houses are booked, so we'll see if the fire station. If not, I'll find some other place in town to have it. So ideally, council wants to have it in town, I'm assuming. Yeah. You're saying the shelter houses are both booked? Mm -hmm. Then we get to be the guest of the chief, right? And what time are we starting? Well, there you also have this deal out of the uh, TV with a smart board in case you need to use it for anything. Depending, I might do that. I might reach out to some other locations that have conference room if I feel as though Does that like include the breakfast menu? Excuse me, sir. Lunch? <laughs> There's a lot going on, yeah. All right, so are we okay with the nine to one? That is community cleanup day, how we had pointed out. So um, unfortunately, if we pick the 22nd, um, council won't be able to participate in community cleanup. Um, I won't be there, but Howie and his staff have handled it pretty well from here in the past. I guess you got a motion. Is there a motion for June 22nd? I'm sorry. Yes. June 22nd. Is that 9 to 1 p.m., Vice Mayor? 9 to 1. Breakfast and lunch. Well, you guys have a, a you have a six a five thousand budget six six k already went to the guy so we got to come up with some additional money which is fine. Um, uh, between nine and lot one, I'm, I think there should be something small here. I'm not saying it's a formal breakfast or a formal lunch. Maybe let's get snacks. It's uh, however you guys want to proceed. It's your event. I assume we have a second. I've got I got a first by Miss Higginson, but she was given stipulations like six twenty two nine to one, and then she said something about breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. So you guys got to decide all that. Right. But do we have a second? No. Can we do it a little later than 9 to 1? I'm not a morning person. Yeah. I'll call you when I get up. Okay. I'm up at 5 about every morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if we did it later, then... Other people could attend because of the trash day. The nine to one's fine with me. I have mm. commitments all through through to November for Friday and Saturday in the afternoon. All right, that's fine. So, I'll second it then. All right. Nine to one. We got a first by Vice Mayor Eggleston and a second by Councilwoman Wright, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. <coughs> Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. I voted no last time, so I'm going to stick with that this time. Okay. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. So that passes five to one. Okay, so it looks like it's June 22nd, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Location to be determined, but somewhere inside city limits. Yeah? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. And moving on to city manager for water billing procedures. Uh, so we met with the finance department. They got a little bit of uh, stuff I, we wanted to run past you guys. We're going to hold off on that. Um, I think what's the best next step is to get some people from council into our administrative building to see how we build, see the ins and outs of the water before council wants to go and make any changes to a code. So I think you guys should have an understanding of the ins and outs of how we operate before we go and change the code. So I would love if council could, if all of you wanted to come in, that's great. We can set some time to do that. It's just gonna be at one time, but we're gonna show you the software procedure, show you the limitations of what we can, can and cannot do, 
And again, I think it's just going to help counsel better themselves by making decisions. We can't change code if we don't know what's going on with it. So um, volunteers for that would be greatly appreciated. Um, you can email me directly, just one at a time. So Mrs. Wright, if you want to come, just email me say, yes, I'm interested, and I'll get that set up for you. Any other comments? And that goes with any operational procedure that we have. So any council wants any of that day to day, email me. I can get you set up with Mr. Kiko and his staff. We can get you come down to the finance. We can get you into that stuff that I operate. It's great. If you guys ever want to shadow anyone, just let us know. We'll get you right in. Okay. Anything further on the water bill? You got anything to build? No. No. Okay, I guess uh, you, you've got Board of Zoning Appeals. You've got three applicants. Yep, so we need to set a time in for you guys to interview those. May I suggest just before the start of the next meeting, there's, I don't think there's a need to have a special meeting on a non-meeting night. Uh, so this is basically to look at their applications and then yeah, interview them. The uh, <coughs> question. Go ahead, Bill. Will you be emailing those apps out to us? And yes, I'm still waiting on, yeah, I got, yeah, I'm trying to locate okay. one that I know is there, I just, I don't, it, it's in the mailbox somewhere I gotta find. All right, thank you. Yep. Uh, I'll move to have the, at the next meeting to interview them. Well, there are three yeah. applicants, so. The possibility of four. I got an email, four. yep, okay. I got an email over the weekend for an application. So if that one's submitted back in time, you'll get that as well. The normal committee would be three or four? Up so to five? It's a five person. It's a five person board. So we could hear all, we could appoint all four. Right. Or yeah. Five, yeah. If, that, yeah. if they pass. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have on my notes either five start, a 5 p.m. start time or a 5 30 start time. Let me hold off on that work session because I got several things I want to bring up about work sessions. What work session are we talking about? You didn't mention a work session. Oh, if you'll let me. We need a work session. I've got questions for several people here that I want answers for before we do a work session. We talked about these committee appointments. I've been talking to uh, Clark County EMA. I think we need to set up a disaster plan. There are several things that are involved here. We already have Go a disaster ahead. recovery plan. We have a disaster recovery plan. It's required by the Do state we? to have one. Yeah, you guys approved it, I think, couple, maybe last year, the year before. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the state, every time we get audited for our audits, they make sure that's up and compliant. Sometimes we have to beef to it or sometimes we don't. So we, we have it in plan. We also have a contingency plan, so something going on with the water and wastewater. So those are all required by the state. All right. All right, what's council's pleasure on this Board of Zoning Appeals members? Uh, make a motion that we interview them at the next council meeting prior to the meeting. That would be a, like an executive session, or would that be open to the public? Um, it's all open to the public, okay. if you believe. Then, I'm positive. Uh, let's start, if we, it, let's start at 530, if council can do that, and that could be adjusted according to how many applicants we have. Right now we have three of them, sir. Mr. Manager, yes. we have three people right now? Yes, sir. Uh, if we only have three people, we only need probably 15 minutes apiece, so we could start an hour early. If we have five, we need an hour and a half before the meeting. So let's I'll make a motion to start at 5.30 if we have the five, and that can be adjusted depending on how many we have. Second. So you're starting at 5.30? Yes. So that's only a half hour to in, in, uh, interview yeah, the three. Half hour, so half, so that's a half hour to interview the three that you have. Is that going to be enough time for uh, you guys? Let's go, uh, but I know Mr. Mon has limitations for his right. work schedule, too. Uh, so 5.30 may be it. I'm just, I'm just making sure you understand. Maybe, maybe five. Maybe let's go with five. Do five. Yeah. Uh, yeah, five. Five is good. Yeah. Okay. So we got a first by uh, Ms., uh, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Five p.m. start time for the BZA interviews. Right. Okay. Second by Mr. Bond, I believe. Second by Mr. Bond. 
Thank you, Councilman Bond. Bond. And moving on with the vote count, we will start with Councilman Grimm. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. I got no. And Councilman Bond. Yes. Is that my six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, passes six to zero. Okay. And moving on with the city manager report. Uh, TIF legislation, Monroe Meadows, is giving uh, council a heads up. That will be coming. I don't know if it'll be the next meeting or meeting after the meeting after that, but it is a pretty lengthy ordinance. Um, that we've done a, a very similar one for DR Horton. It's one of those things we introduce and it sits and sits and sits and sits, and then we vote on it and then it sits and sits and sits and becomes effective. I um, just want council to know that is coming. It is usually a rather lengthy ordinance, so you're not side blinded by that. Um, there'll be that'll be the first of two ordinances uh, regarding that to particular tip. Um, Rumpke early start time on, on the eclipse day. So we kind of started getting some complaints about that. Um, so I have an answer for everyone as to why it happened. So we have four trash trucks that service the city of New Carlisle. Four. Um, that particular guy who had that truck that day is his normal route. He was ill that day. The temporary driver came in. Temporary driver was not aware of the 4 a.m. restriction. We are the only, and I stress, only municipality that they service that said you cannot start at 2, 4 is more appropriate. So he just assumed it was a 2 a.m. start time. So that explains why it was just that one section of the town. Um, to make something positive out of this, I will um, compliment Rumpke because they came through our town very, very quiet, quietly. They did not use their mechanical arms from what I understood, so when they were here at 4 a.m., it was done in a very respectful way. So thank you for that. Uh, but we did have a few people ask about that, so I just wanted to update everyone on that. Uh, Rumpke situation on the solar eclipse day. And the last thing I have for the city manager report is council has in front of them an, a potential, uh, an opportunity to object any kind of class C or D liquor license in the city of New Carlisle. Now these are the CVS's, the Rite Aid's that sell your beer. Um, every year, every couple of years, you guys have this in front of you. Um, I recommend that you don't appeal any of them because they're fine. Um, we don't have any issues with them. We don't have any cops. Don't get called to CVS a lot, do you, for the bigger sale that goes on. So, um, but it is a step that, that you guys do have to do. So if you did read that, I will take a motion uh, to uh, move in a, whatever direction council sees fit. So if the motion would be to not object any liquor permit, just say your motion says not to object or something like that. So it's clear. I did not object. And so we got a motion on the floor. We got a first by Vice Mayor Eggleston and a second by Councilman Lindsay. And this is to not object to any class D or D liquor permits. Right. We'll call for the vote. Discussion. <laughs> discussion. Sorry. Thank you. I don't think there's any discussion. Is it? Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Passes six to zero. That's all I have for my city manager report. Mr. Go ahead. Mr. Bridge, mm -hmm. we talked the day before the tornadoes were supposed to get. And you said we have no contingency plan. Now you say we do. You don't have a contingency plan for a tornado coming through your town. We have a contingency, and that was to house your residents. We have a contingency plan to, for city operations to continue, i.e., we run your accounts payable, your financial software is up and going, and stuff like that. You don't have a plan for if this town comes where you're putting your citizens. That's not the plan I was talking about. Okay. Yeah. That is more about so we can remain operational. Does that make sense? A little clarify that. Thank you for that. So then we should get together with like Clark County EMA? If you guys want to do something, if a tornado comes into town, where you're going to put people, yes. I move we get the city manager or the person who designates to meet with either the Ohio EMA or the Clark County EMA and develop a contingency plan for disaster in town, either man made or natural. I would like to, I guess the word is having to change that motion 
to have a work session with the Clark County EMA to see what they would do for us in the event of a tornado, much like Lakeview, and also have all of council involved. Because I think this is going to be a little bit bigger project than something that administration is going to want to handle. It's going to come back to us, I think, in the beginning. I mean, if you don't like that idea, what? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. If I may ask a question. I believe uh, the EMA, if we had a disaster, the fire chief would contact them or they would just show up. That is already a plan. If I'm misspeaking, please correct any me. Type of emergency and I think the chief can like answer that. this question for us. Any type of emergency situation like that, I'll, I would be the one that would contact the EMA and request for their resources. Right. Of course, you'd be the city manager and the council advisor of what we're doing and what, what we have coming. Don't we normally have to make an emergency declaration? I'll be honest with you. I think I, I think I think okay. Um, the EMA is going to help us out, but what you guys don't have, the EMA don't have a place that says if half your town torn down, we're going to put your people. The EMA don't have a plan in place that says this shelter house now acts as a. And I could be wrong, Fire Chief. I don't want to speak I'm out of. Sorry, I don't want to speak out of town. But I think we can do our due diligence and have our own local thing, and then see how that combinates with EMA. <clears throat> I said the EMA don't have a plan of half this town to take out no, by the tornado that we designate this. At the they, they depend on us to ask to, t to tell them what we at, what we're asking for. What do we need? Do we need a command post? Do we need lighting? Do we need you know this? So something this intricate, Mayor Cook is cor absolutely correct. I think we need to have a meeting with Clark EMA to see what they can bring. Also, too, hey, this is our scenario because I know we had a big talk and Mr. Grimm was a catalyst about and Mr. Grimm was willing to sit at this shelter house should something happen to the town. But me and Grimm, Councilman Grimm is the one who talked about that on the phone. There is no formal policy in place. And I think we need to establish that and then complement our policy with what EMA can provide us, if that makes sense. Change it from a city manager to council. All right, and I assume you want the uh, city manager to work with the Clark County Emergency Management to set up a meeting. Preferably a work session between us. Okay, we got a motion and I need a second. I still was talking. I wanted to talk about it a second. Um, can we just do every Monday meet? Because it seems like we have so much to take care of and we're really behind. It feels like we're really behind. We're not moving very fast at all, you know. And I know it's a slow process for everything, but if we could just meet every Monday instead of every other Monday as a work session and then a real council meeting and then another work session. And I know it's a lot, but I just do think it might be necessary for a while. Did you make a second on that motion? Well, and she asked a question. I, was I know she asked a question. Floor. I might but second. But we've already got a motion on the floor, okay. and I think we're going to need a second to it. Second to it. Uh, we got a second. <laughs> but, 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 okay. So, what, but what's the first one for? Motion is to work contact. Oh, the EMA. The EMA okay. for all of the council. And include trustee. I'm sorry. Include the chief. I will direct it. Oh yeah, I, the chief would definitely. I will. Be ready. I will. Thank you. I can direct him. All right. So this is for me to get a hold of the EMA to set the schedule the work session. Schedule the work okay. session and let council know the availability of. I personally do not need a motion to do that. I can call the EMA. So do you guys want to have a work session on this? And so do you want to go ahead and set the date for that work session so I can go to EMA with some. Solid dates, perhaps. Uh, I I like Kathy's idea of the Mondays. Uh, I have an insight to that too. Um, so when I had a pre meeting with Mr. Bales, who's going to be doing our council retreat, I we we need to get work sessions back. I mean that's a given because what happens is we don't have work sessions and we expect to do all this business on a regular council meeting. That's right. And it turns into back and forth and really not business getting done in a timely manner. 
So I think if we do meet, some cities have it one Monday a month, they have a work session. Some of them do two, most of them are just one. However you guys want to handle it, we had, we had them before and they worked out great. And they allowed us to really get the beef of it done and these meetings are more, you know, centered around your legislation, you know, opposed to a rehash of how many permits we issued for the month. I mean, come on. There's more important things this council needs to be discussing than we issued 17 permits for grass violations, you know? We got some big stuff out here that Mrs. Wright is nailing on the head. So yeah, I think Mondays are great. I think we should probably do Monday work sessions. Sorry to go off on that tangent, but I couldn't think of a better way to fit it in because we're talking about All right, about I'm, I'm going to step up one and let's set a next a work session for next Monday night. If you can get hold of EMA and we can do that, that's fine. If not, I want to entertain that book from Huber Heights in regard to the committees and work on that session to get those committees set up. So we have three weeks before our next official meeting, so keep that in mind. Right. So do you want to do meet on the 22nd or do you want to meet on the 29th? Because we have a 22nd we don't meet and a 29th we don't meet and we meet again on the 6th for a formal meeting. So whatever works for council as a whole, I guess. I'm just letting you know there's more than one Monday between the next council meeting right. I'm getting at. Is it 20? Go ahead, Ken. Well, I was just going to recommend, but I mean, I know I sound like a workaholic. I'm not. But the 22nd and the 29th would give me a better idea of what all you guys want. Because I feel like I'm over here yapping a lot, and I don't want to feel that way. But at the same time, I think we need to talk more. Well, it's better you than me. Okay. <laughs> So, if we could do the next two Mondays and maybe take care of so committees. you're advocating a work session the 22nd and the 29th. Advocating doing both, and that way, if the EMA EM can get here, that would be great. So we have to legal advertise for those. So, if council want to do two Mondays in a row? Am I going to be required to do? Can I just be at one of those Mondays? So, show you guys can have an open and honest discussion amongst yourselves. Yeah, have you guys want to handle that. it? So I know we had talked a few meetings about administration not being present so you guys can have an open and honest discussion and we're not overstepping. My feeling is in order to bring Kathy up to par, I don't think Mr. Shammy is possibly the same way, a little bit in the dark of what's going on. I think we need to go ahead and step up, possibly have these two work sessions, get them under our belt, get the retreat under our belt, and then maybe we can back off. These are gonna be at 6 p.m.? I would suggest 6 p.m. if that's all right. Do we right need a money. motion for this or not? Yeah, you need it, because then you I move that we have a work session on the 22nd, 29th, 6 p.m. at the shelter house, either one and or wherever we can find it if, they, if they're busy. I'll find a place for you guys. Who has the first on that? Me. No, second. Yeah. For the next and the second was? Kathy. Yeah. Allow you guys to discuss. And then we're going to be starting at Both six. Days. Both days, yeah. Both days. Both of them days are open? Yes. Okay. Can you add to that calendar? Or you can just view it. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Well, I don't think you're going to be able to cover everything in one night because I think if the EMA has come in here, you're going to take up one night. I think of this committee's situation is going to be another night. Um, I'll leave it to council though. Can I interject before you guys vote, sir? Do you mind if I just keep the 22nd free like for if I get a hold of the e I don't want to say the 22nd is going to be the EMA day and the 29th is going to be the board committee days can we just leave those two dates open until I can <coughs> confirm because the EMA may be able to come on the 29th and then we do the committees on the 22nd <coughs> and then when we put the illegal advertising in I'll know a better understanding of what we're actually meeting for so we can actually put that in legal advertising too um, so I want to say two so the 22nd is how many days away Next week. Next week. Next Monday. Next Monday. I'm not even sure you guys can meet then. 
Because I'm not even sure we have enough time to put the legal advertising in. Right. Make it to 29. For the legal yeah. advertising, now that I think about it. So we have to put that out at least seven days before the meeting. And then, hmm. Yeah, and then they won't leave. There's always like a two to three, two to three day window before they'll post. So if I we were to give that to them tomorrow, they would the legal action even run to Thursday. Okay. Now that I think about that out loud, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. I'm so the 29, 22nd may not be an option for a, a Monday, but later in that week, possibly could. I am in my motion to make it the 29th and the 13th of May. That'll give whoever enough time to get the the uh, legal notices put in and put out. So 629 and 513. Right. If council is okay with the 13th. That way we still get the two meetings in and we have a council meeting in between them. If that's what council wants to do. Who was the second on that? Was you? I was the first time. Okay. So I think. So. A second. You're still going to second? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I withdrew the first motion. Is there anybody you have anything sir? further on that motion? Oral? Okay. Um, so we got a first by Councilman Lindsay, a second by Councilwoman Wright. Uh, Councilman Bond? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Grimm? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Eagleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. And Councilwoman Wright. Yes. That passes six to zero. All right, I got a couple other things here. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's a 6 p.m. start time? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Personally, I'd like to thank Councilman Grimm for taking uh, the tornado situation underhand and setting it up with the administration as far as the shelter houses in case we did have a uh, tornado attack during those storms. Second factor, the donuts and coffee I thought was well received. I think we had a fairly decent crowd and I think, well, we got another one set up three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. The situation with the Rumpke, I want to thank Kathy for her diligence in putting uh, notices on Facebook. To the best of my knowledge, I only had one complaint, and once the woman understood what it was, she had put her trash out behind the truck. So that was taken care of. Uh, second factor, I have a request for a proclamation which i'm going to have to ask council for approval the proclamation request is from uh, megan adams she's basically writing to request that you proclaim may 14th and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Axbia Awareness Day, Childhood Arrest, arrest. yeah, a speech is very misunderstood and a very challenging speech disorder in our child. Kids need your help. The day of May 14th aims to unite community members and children with this speech defect, their friends and family to be an unstoppable United Force advocating for children with childhood experience for speech. By issuing this proclamation, you will not only be showing that you support all of our constituents, but you will help to raise awareness for complicated speech disorders that affect one in 1,000 children. Primarily, I have the proclamation here that with the approval of council, I would like to have us go ahead and res resolve that May 14, 2024 is Axe Awareness Day by the citizens of Nicolau. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. 
motion by Peg and a second by Kathy. <coughs> discussion? Any discussion? Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Councilwoman Eagleston. Yes. Councilwoman Lindsay. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. All Council right. The next item of business, I need the. Uh, Motion to excuse Mr. Shamming. So moved. Today's meeting. Second. Lind uh, Councilman Lindsay and then Councilwoman Eagleston. Right? Legal. Councilman Lindsay. And Vice Mayor Eggleston. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Said so, so second, right? Yeah. Okay. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me? She motioned us and Mr. Bond. No, Mr. Bond motioned and Peggy second. Mr. Bond did not motion. I have a first by <laughs> Councilman <laughs> Lindsay and a second by Councilwoman Eggleston. That's what I have for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm already oh, confused. Oh, this is for Shammy. Okay. Yeah, I'm already confused. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just, you're next, <laughs> right? Yeah. Council, we'll Councilman we'll Lindsay. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Do I have everybody? You forgot the empty seat? Mm. Yes. <coughs> Pass the six to zero. All right. Next suggestion or the next situation coming up. I have in front of me a Section of the Charter, Section 4.12, which is procedure. Of that, I am advocating that we change the section which calls for special meetings may be held on the call of the mayor, four or more members, and whenever practical, no less than 12 hours written notice by clerk of council to each council member. I would like to include the word city manager and it should read special meetings may be held at the call of the mayor, city manager or four or more members whenever practical. And if, not, if nothing else, I'll make it in the form of a motion and include that in the ballot. Point of order, Mr. Mayor, we don't have the authority to change the charter. We don't what? We don't have the authority to change the charter. The citizens do. Right. So we have to put this on the ballot. Okay. That's where well, I'm going. Second of all, the city manager said he doesn't want that authority. Oh, well. well, I think at this point we had a discussion about yeah. that in regard to one other meeting. Mr. Bridge may not be the city manager from here on, but our charter will prevail. So if we have that in the charter, I don't think we've got any problem. I don't believe Mr. I don't believe Mr. Bridge said that he didn't want the authority. He said that at a, at a, during one of those discussions. I don't believe so, because there could be an instance where <clears throat> he can't get hold of the mayor or the vice mayor and has to require well, has to. Proper procedure would be the Mr. Mayor. If that is a charter change, we need to uh, discuss the charter and get it, and we can make changes in it as council and get it on the ballot for November. Uh, the charter's been two years. Languishing. At, at least. Yes, I, I'm, yeah, you're fine. It's been at least two years since it came to us. We haven't done diddly squat with it. And so I agree with let's you. get it to get the charter on the on the discussion table with us and we can go through it line by line and change whatever we so desire in it. We already approved those changes. The changes that they made. That's correct. We can approve more changes. 
before it goes to the ballot. This council has the ability to do that. Go ahead, Mr. Bridge. So, council already went through the changes that the committee had wanted, and council already said this is what's going to the ballot or not. So, the reason it did not go to the ballot last year is because we didn't do it enough time. So, you guys are going to get those charter amendments again here soon. So, me and Jake were talking about mm -hmm. that. Now that I have my assistant, we're going to revisit that with you guys because you have some new council members being sat. But um, nothing set in stone. But council already did what they were supposed to do with that. Um, but again, I was going to bring it back to you guys for, for review because it's going to go on the ballot in this November. So that point in time would be you could maybe possibly add that to that. Um, if you guys want those charter amendments soon, may have them maybe for you at the next meeting or the meeting after that, preferably the meeting after that. So I can time to reorganize everything if it needs to be reorganized. <laughs> and then take it from there. And we can make changes to it when it comes back to us. Yeah, until, before until, it goes, until that- Before until, it goes to the ballot, until, we can make changes. Well, yeah, because I, I have to know what you guys are putting. First off, it's gonna be very expensive because we have to put on the ballot. The ballot language is gonna say all the changes we're doing. So this is not gonna be, you thought your dais was expensive. <laughs> Wait to get the legal ad for this thing. I'm making a joke, but it is just gonna be expensive. Right. So before we even get to that, you guys are gonna have to say, this is for sure what we want because I need to know that in order to go into the next form of step of getting it actually on the ballot. So do you remember when we do a fire levy or police levy, we put in there, these are what we're using it for, this is how much it's going to cost, how much it's going to generate the ballot language we have to supply. It's no different with this. We still have to supply that ballot language. So there could be something on there that this council wanted to take off, but the new council says, no, we kind of like it. Let's vote to keep it on. So that's the process with that. So, so I would suggest if the manager can get that in a couple of weeks or as soon as he can get it together. I'll have it for you next meeting because I have three weeks between this meeting and said it to you. And then uh, I think we'll look at it then. And yeah. then that particular item in the charter, we can address it at that time. All right. That's good. Mr. Mayor. Do we know how much time we have? Like, what's the... I think it's that, that we're up against it's probably probably three months three months, three months before the date or something like that okay. we're chartered so I know it's I think it is three months because I think it's mm -hmm. two months for our, for our council measures um, but three months if it doesn't our charter doesn't mention and since yeah it's three August. Yeah. if it's I'm wrong on that statement I'll, I'll email you guys it's either August or September right? mm -hmm. yeah. August. can you is that four months before the is that three months August is that three? Yeah. That's about what it is in three. August. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll have them for you for their first meeting in May. All right. So I think we're all done with that. So I guess we move on to comments from the members of the public. If you will, go to the podium, name and address. Pat Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street, former Charter Review Committee member. But I was coming to the podium originally to give you two compliments. One is um, I love the dialogue that, that council had with um, the gentleman sitting in front of me who has the, sight, the sounds in the gun shop. That is what, what we as Charter Review was hoping that dialogue between citizens and the managers of the city whether it be council or you know hired employees would be something that was flexible and so i commend you on the dialogue that you had with the citizen on that business issue and i'm attending a church on main street where we could not get a sign approved because you know we're on main street and you can't have any motion and all that stuff so yeah we've been on both things but i think that dialogue was really important so thank you, you did it very well. Um, secondly, um, I didn't tell any council member this, but the night of the tornado, March 14th, John and I were glued to watching Brian Hall y'all and the local weather forecasting the tornadoes that were coming, were actually from north to southeast. And um, there are members in our church that live in the trailer park up, up north and also the one down south 70. But, the two of those church members, and, and one is in her 80s, 
Uh, the other, I think, is 70. But they come to our church basement whenever there's tornado warnings. Uh, Chief, I don't know if you know that. But um, I think the city needs a plan, and I was hoping that's what you were talking about, um, Dale. Because that tornado left people with nowhere to go. And that's my opinion as a citizen from people I know that live in trailer parks. And then I was a volunteer. I was deployed by the Red Cross to go to Indian Lake. And I served there four days, seeing the most amazing community grassroots movement to help those citizens. But 45% of the homes in Indian Lake, no, um, in Lakeview and in Russell's Point were destroyed. And a lot of those were um, mobile homes or, 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 or inexpensively built homes. I'll put it that way, too. And um, Lakeview did not have power. I was there four days until the 9th, let's see, the 14th, the 21st. And they didn't get, they were out of power for nine days in downtown Lakeview, just so you know the length of that time. And we were doing childcare on the second floor with no windows, and we, one day our generator ran out. This was like day seven. And um, we were in total pitch dark, but luckily we had some flashlights and we had some kids, so we were able to be operating safely. But we definitely need, and that was the thing that went through my mind when we were watching those tornadoes, we were under threat maybe of tornado here. They were 41 miles up the road on 235, which ends in Lakeview. They were totally decimated um, downtown and in those areas. And the three deaths occurred in the house next to the, the building next to the building that we were working in. And across the parking lot from where we were doing childcare was the big manufacturing plant. That was totally destroyed by the tornado. And so if you've been up there and seen the, des um, the destruction, you would be shocked. But we definitely need plans for that kind of situation. And so I commend you for working on that and deciding that we do need a plan, because clearly we do. OK, so I was originally going to come and just give you a quick update on the community garden. John and I have started working with some other volunteers. He's not considering this official report because he says I only do it once a, once a year to you guys. But I just want to tell you, we have the most gardeners we've ever had. Many of them are from international. Um, John just had a big soil test that we got the results back two days ago. And our soil does need some work. We are trying to do the gardening without chemicals and with healing the soil. So we um, are trying to grow vegetables that are healthy for people to eat and that don't have any chemicals on them. So that's kind of um, our, what keeps us motivated. If I could give you one hint about what needs to happen in our food um, industry in this country, and number one, it's under attack. It's being, individual uh, growers and farmers are being shut down. And if you're not part of big, uh, like in medicine, if you're not part of big pharma, in, in the food industry, if you're not one of the big eight that control our food supply, I'm not trying to be alarmist. I'm just speaking reality. You know, for 40 years, we've hung our hats on organic. But organic only gives you things that aren't to put on your food. When I retired uh, 10 years ago and had time to think about life and living, I realized my food didn't taste like I remember it tasting. <coughs> so I got involved with John in the garden. And we were out there working. Uh, now we're working almost full time, it seems like. But we care about the food, and I've always looked at that land that actually the school uh, board owns. And what, last time we went to a meeting with the school board, we told them quite frankly that we feel that this plot of land is New Carlisle's emergency food supply. We're an isolated community. If our food goes to you know where in a handbasket, and, and you no longer like I'm in COVID, you couldn't find things in grocery stores. There are other people at work trying to take over our food supply. China's buying up a lot of farmland. So we have to be concerned about our food. And, and is it good quality? And um, so we are working to do that. Um, and, and I think we haven't done enough as a, as a community to be prepared in case we do have a food crisis. So we're there. That land is there. Um, we're trying to teach people to grow, to care about what food they're eating and to live healthy, because food is medicine. So that was just my word to you about the garden. That's what I really intended to come up here. But the other two things came up during the meeting. So thank you for listening. I appreciate counsel. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chair, go ahead. If I may address your comments about the uh, tornado. 
I spoke with Mr. Bridge. Um, we agreed that we had places to keep people out of the elements after the fact. We didn't have bedding supplies. We didn't have anything else. We just had a place to keep them out of weather. But we had no place to put them. During. When they, during. Exactly. Right. So it would take um, cooperation with uh, churches or businesses that do have a basement. Right. Uh, and we do. We can put people during the tournament. Right. Mr. Hensley obviously has ideas. I don't have any ideas. Okay. <laughs> 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 I saw that. You're going to build a basement. Bomb shelter. So if I could readdress one thing about the gardening and the food. If you don't do anything else, if you go to your favorite store, Kroger's, Aldi's, you know, IGA, whatever it is, ask them what items they are selling that are regeneratively grown. That means the meat is healthy with no chemicals, it's cattle that are walking on real soil, and chickens that are running around and not being cooped up in these mega you know, feedlots. Um, and then f uh, produce. The, the big future of food is vegetables. You know, and eating more vegetables is what keeps us healthy. So you care about how your vegetables are. Ask them what regenerative products they're selling, because that is the future of food. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, man. Go ahead. Uh, Mrs. Kraybacher, I have a question for you on that uh, last statement. Have you asked anybody in these stores about that question? Because I am sure they don't know. No, I haven't. I was thinking, we, we, we do education at the farmer's market, so I think what we'll do is we'll put together a flyer, and when people come to our table, we're going to have a little flyer that says, if you care about your food, go ask where you buy your food, what products, and there's a website you can go to that you're getting regenerative certifications now. That's much more important than organic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put together a flyer for the <coughs> farmer's market. Thank you. I, I know there's a couple of places within just a short drive of New Carlisle that, that uh, I believe has uh, grass-fed and grain-fed beef that you can get. And it's been a while since, if it's been a while since you've had that, it tastes different than what you buy at the store. And it even looks good. <clears throat> so that's, that's all I have, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? If not, Mr. Bridge, I guess we'll go to the ordinances and resolutions. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> okay, uh, so no resolutions tonight. So ordinance 2024-07, introduced on 2-2024 public hearing action tonight. Uh, ordinance authorizing the city manager into an agreement for IT and compliance services. So moved. Second. So we got a first and second on the floor. Explanation of this ordinance. This is really a housekeeping ordinance, even though it's a little late in the year. This is one that we had tabled because we were trying to figure out the language for that would satisfy the insurance companies. It had to do with indemnification versus hold harmless. Yes, they are that picky. So we ended up with a hold harmless clause instead of an indemnification clause. Um, but now that we have that cleared out, it's in front of council for tonight to be voted on. Any discussion? No. If not. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Passes six to zero. Okay. Am I just to keep going? Okay. Ordinance 2024-15 introduced on 3-18-24. Public hearing on 4-1-24 action tonight. An ordinance amending chapter 1 to 1244 of the City of New Carlisle Planning and Zoning Code. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. <clears throat> so an explanation of this ordinance, this allows a zoning inspector to cite into mayor's court and also gives a penalty section for him to do so, or her, she to do so. <coughs> for the vote. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Any discussion? You got a motion? A second. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Passes six to zero. Uh, ordinance 2024-16 introduced on 4124 public hearing and action tonight an ordinance amending the city of new, new carlisle income tax rules and regulations regarding the local board of tax review so moved second have a motion and a second who is the first i'm sorry me we got a first by vice mayor eagleston and a second by council woman, councilman lindsay oh I'm sorry so was mrs one. wright sorry so we'll go with Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Passes six to zero. Ordinance 2024-17 introduced on 4124 public and hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending ordinance 2014-04 for the purpose of correcting your scrivener's error regarding the permit fee for final plat estimated project cost. Mm -hmm. Second. I got a first by Councilman Me. Lindsay. Yes. And a second by Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yep. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Bone? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. And then Councilman Lindsay? Yes. So it passes six to zero. And the rest is read only, I do believe. An ordinance amending uh, ordinance 2024-18 introduction tonight public and hearing action on 5624. An ordinance amending section 1426 of the codified ordinance of the city of New Carlisle regarding residential vegetation. Ordinance 2024-19 introduction tonight public hearing and action on 5624. An ordinance amending section 146043 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the parking of passenger commercial and heavy vehicles. Ordinance 2024-20, introduction tonight. Public hearing and action on 5624, an ordinance amending section 146044. Other codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding accessory uses for recreational vehicles and equipment and overnight parking. Is there any other additional city business you all like to talk about? Thank you. I have two things that they've already been brought up. Okay, Mr. Bond. Um, Something I don't know what exactly would need to be done. I think I would need to work with maybe the city manager, maybe Jake, but <clears throat> this kind of goes along with what Mr. Kraybacher brought up, as well as what we're doing with these ordinances uh, that we read only tonight, as far as giving some freedom back to our citizens. <clears throat> and that is in the way of poultry. We had a young lady that came and talked to us a couple times last year about asking about being able to have poultry in the city. Um, but I've also talked to some other citizens that are concerned about the food source and would like to have some poultry um, in the city for their own consumption. Um, and I think it's something when you look around at our, our community, you look around at the surrounding communities, most of them allow it. Hewer Heights allows it, Troy allows it, Tip City allows it, most of Columbus allows it. We're a small rural town. We have, we, a, have we have a feed store, we have a grain elevator, we have a cattle ranch outside the city. Um, we have a gun shop. We have <laughs> uh, I would just like to see us uh, allow that in a responsible way so that people can kids can be involved in 4-H as a 4-H project that the young lady came and talked to us about as well as um, for those that would like to know where their eggs are coming from and want to raise their own eggs for themselves they have the freedom to do that so. mm -hmm. 
Go ahead, Ken. I, I find that very funny. I have not talked to Mr. Bond, and tonight I was going to also bring up that subject. I put a revision on the animal enclosures, 618.15, and to revise it to read, no person except a licensed vegetarian shall keep a hog, pig, except for a pot belly pig, one, horse, mule, cow, goat, sheep, and any other member of that family. I'm going to skip some of those words and go on to um, chickens being only hens, no greater than six per owned home, so no rentals, and absolutely no roosters. The pens shall be maintained in the rear yards at the same requirement as dog kennels. And then I also was going to go on from there, but if you want to stop and talk about chickens, that'll be fine. <laughs> go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Mike has a chicken? I don't know. Mike got one chicken. Uh, Mike Lowry, 16 from Wood Drive. So, this has been discussed for a long time back, you know, when Aaron Lighty was on council and, you know, and even before that, I'm sure, um, you know, I am dead set against that. You know, one of the reasons is I live in a city because I don't want to live next to farm animals that is meant to be outside the city. Now, Ben, I agree that there are cities that do allow that, but I also think as responsible council members, until the city gets the dog and cats under control that people can't control as pets, you have no rights to allow them another animal that will not be controlled or, or you know there's going to be those ones that do but there's also going to be the ones that don't so until we get the current animals that we allow in the city to be taken care of and under control to open up another animal it would be just irresponsible i think just my two cents thank you my can, can i add to this when i worked in riverside we looked at this so yes, Huber Heights has them, but there's size limitations to the yard. So Huber Heights, for example, under current law, chickens are not allowed on residential lots less than one acre. So when I was at Riverside, we did this and we had to see, we used ArcGIS to see how many lots have uh, had to big enough to allow these things to happen. None of them did. We don't have a single lot in this, except for Jessica Putterball's house, maybe that has an acre or more that allows this stuff to happen. Even our house is on Linden. So what I'm trying to say is when we get into this and we research it, there's going to be limitations about the size of yards that's best practices for these animals to go into. So yeah, anytime that we've seen these researches, Bethel Township, I do believe, also has a one acre minimum as well. So it's not about quality of life for the person, i.e. the human, it's about quality of life for the actual animal being raised. On top of that too, Mr. Lowry does have a, have a point in case. We see a lot more people who don't want chickens in this city that I talk to than people who do. Um, and that's just my opinion from talking to people when they come up and talk about it. Because it seems like every two to three years, this comes back up to the council, then it goes on Facebook, and then everyone gets involved. So. Now, ultimately, I would not be doing my job if I didn't say what I knew. It is ultimately council's decision how they want to handle their, their city. But I think once you direct me to look into some of this stuff, you're going to find out that it comes with stipulations. And those stipulations usually are how big or small someone's yard is. Okay. Um, I did look up a lot of those, and I, I've got a paper actually for everybody. So let me hand those out. This one for you, one for me, and you. Whilst we're doing that, I just interject that there are ways to build coops that have no odor, no smell. I don't know why I've seen them. Mm -hmm. You never got to change the, um, the bedding. The bedding, because it self decomposes and there's no smell to it. So I just throw that out there. It's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. No one's saying about the smell. It's about the size of the yard. It's not about the smell it generates. Well, like, here we go, Kathy, Cleveland. One per 800 square feet. Mm -hmm. so, it's a lot less than an acre. Right, but how many <laughs> yards here are 800 feet, square feet? I have no idea. So those are some of the limitations we get. Out on the surface, it may say, yeah, we want them, but we may have a lot more restrictions than what we can. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have someone in, well, I'll tell you, like Northwoods are out. Northwoods can't have them. <laughs> then let's say the only port in town we can have them is maybe R2, which is Linden, which is four houses. And then maybe you can have some R5s in there. Then you go, all right, well, I can have it, but this person has. Then it's going to be an, it's going to be a nightmare to and to enforce what i recommended from day one was to have a central location that someone like the garden if they wanted to rent something out coops they have them there they're centrally located you call them chicken trackers you move them everywhere. yeah whatever the case may be that way they're not in someone's individual yard but if you want to rent a spot for your chicken to be they've got the land to do it yeah, 
you can't be, re you, you, the moment you let someone have a chip, I'll tell you right now, my neighbor came home with a chicken, I've been going right to my council. I don't want to look at it, I don't want to smell it, that's why I chose to live in the city. But there are ways to still make it happen if you designate an area. That way it's not widespread in the city, it's more controlled. Just an idea. And that, that's my only issue ahead. with that is Sorry. it's kind of the government controlling what the people can do with their property because there are some there are some larger properties that could do it responsibly um and honestly i don't think there's that many people in town that are going to take advantage of this honestly um mm. but <laughs> there's plenty you already are yeah. Yeah. so if, if those exist which i don't know that they do but apparently they do it must not be a problem i mean nobody seems to complain about them. I mean, I, well, I mean, one thing the council has to recognize is that rules and government are there for a reason. They are. I mean, you, you, people who live in a city don't expect farm animals next to them. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, hey, you guys, we've been down, at Mike, you know, every couple of years we fight this. We go through it and it comes back and we look into it and something falls through the crack. Um, but like I said, we will do whatever you guys want us to do, but I think it's, you'll have a lot more stipulations when we go to research it. The, the only thing I'll say about this is we are trying to grow our community here, and this is a growing popular thing to do. People are getting very concerned about where their food are coming from, yes, and if you're are. wanting to attract I think, people. I think certain people are in certain parts of town. I this, think, yeah. this is attractive to people. Mm. It is. We, we have farm animals. We keep them at the FFA barn or there's four each groups where we keep our, I mean, we have a cow. <laughs> We've had cows. Yeah, so. yeah we, we can't allow large yeah, I'm just farm animals. animals. Of course, yeah. I, I, I agree. I don't want yeah. chicken. But, <laughs> but most chicken coops are like, what, four foot uh, by 10 there, tops? There's all different sizes. There is all sizes, want. yes. Yeah. But so can you small. require a chicken that, I mean, this is not, I'm asking this seriously. Can you require that chicken to be almost pegged like a dog, has a little chip in it? Because if we have a chick, find a chicken mill road, which is going to happen, how are we going to locate yeah, who the owner of that chicken, chicken is? Now we got a feral yeah. cat. Now we thought we had a feral cat problem. How do we control chickens just randomly in town that get out? Some people move and leave. They leave them, and there's some of the things I, that I guess those are things. I guess I would cross that bridge when we came to it. But I think most people that are going to do this responsibly are going to keep trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Because it's their food source. They're they're kind of attached that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got quail, they got chickens. Bethel Township, FYI? Uh -huh. Yeah. Bethel mm -hmm. Township, unincorporated area? Yeah, but right off to the side of That's still an unincorporated area. Yeah, that's an option. Yeah. They got 50 chickens up there. I never smell them. Yeah. Well, well when, when I drive by, I don't smell it. One of, one of the big problems we have in the fact that the <laughs> planning does, does department and the enforcement is now getting a little bit better handle on some of the problems that we've got in this town, along with the people not taking care of their property. I'm going to be honest with you. If you were to stick to a chicken coop, next to one of those houses in Northwood, Katie, bar the door. I think you would be having a lot more problems than what we've got. And I, I would recommend, if you're even wanting to look at this, to have Mr. Moore research and either come up with some kind of a legislation. Um, I'll, I'll, go do, ahead. Do you mind? Mr. Bond, I'll get a hold of you next week, this week. We'll set a sign, start looking at this stuff. Yeah. I mean, that way we I want a motion that we do or? look at this. I don't want this to fall on the wayside. I'm going to fight for this. No, it's fine. You can there, do that. We have people have signed, and we can get more signatures. We've already got over 50 residents in New Carlisle that want chickens. They want hens. Nobody wants a rooster. I, 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 how are you guys, it's fine, how are you guys, what I was gonna suggest is you get with me to, to develop the guidelines of what you want and look at the best practices. It's, so so when you here. bring forth yeah. the ordinance, like Mr. Lindsay has done it, you work with me, we draft it, we put your I'll name on the bottom. I'll be happy to work with you and, and I'm sure and I, Ben will too. Yeah. I, I would like to comment, uh, working with the manager on 
the three ordinances mm -hmm. that it wound up being was not nearly as difficult as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so, but I also want to advise council, uh, any ordinance that we want to bring forth, we can. Mm -hmm. he, he will work with us. He will try to guide you whichever way the water's flowing that day. But in reality, as a councilman, we can direct the manager what we want in that ordinance and bring it to us for a vote. And, and he, had, he has been, we had a couple of conversations over one of the ordinances. And then when I explained it to him why I wanted it that way, he understood it. And again, it goes back to Mr. Bond's comment earlier, giving freedom back to the citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I don't, have, I don't care if that people has chickens or not. In fact, there's people in this town that has chickens. Uh, I don't see them, I don't smell them, I don't hear them. As long as any rooster waking me up at the crack of dawn, That's shit, sure. if it does, it'll be on dinner that night. Mm -hmm. uh, but but it, it, it's easy to work with him on these ordinances, and ultimately, any councilman can, can work on an ordinance. Uh, <clears throat> In fact, we, we could probably go straight to the attorney if we wanted to and work on it and bypass him. I would not advise that. I would advise putting in, you know, going through him with it. Uh, you know, and get his, some of his input. But ultimately, we can write the ordinance. Uh, and when it goes to Jake, believe me, when it goes to Jake, you're not even going to recognize it because Jake puts in all the legal stuff. When, when I got my ordinances back, I thought, what? <laughs> This is nothing that I had, but then reading it, it, it made sense, and it was pretty much what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I know. So, no, I mean, yes, I, think, I think the issue is, when you're going to talk about ordinances, so much is happening and changing in, you know, agricultural food production and the real concerns that are, that are very real. Uh, so, one person's not going to have all the knowledge. It's going to take dialogue, and I think the citizens going to want a chance to express what they know, the practices that they use and, and that are good. You know, when you're talking about you want the best practice for, for chickens, clearly it's not the mega feedlots when yeah. they're raised in small cages and they're not healthy and the eggs you buy are not very good. I buy Eggland best. Huh? I buy Eggland's best. There you go. That's what I buy. <laughs> so I would say there has to be some dialogue. Sure, and when I get with you guys, I don't dissuade you guys. And he'll tell you, you explain to me. I also say, hey, this is what I know about the situation. We may do some research, but I don't sit just say yay or nay. That's not my job. My job is to advise you as your key policy advisor. Mm -hmm. I like working one-on-one -on -one with council members. I enjoy working with Mr. Grimm. I enjoy working with Mr. Lindsay. It's just easier when it's one-on-one -on -one opposing a group setting like this. I'd be more than willing to sit down with both of you to kind of just go back and forth and draft the ordinance great. and get it in. And now uh, we can have it usually done, and yes, it is going to take dialogue, but I will always err on the side of we're not going to get the city sued. So yeah, if there's best practices on there that says chickens are one per 800 square feet, I don't want PETA in here suing the city. I don't want that attention, so that's another kickback to it as well. You know, so we got to make sure we're doing it right for everyone involved. But if you guys want to change it, that's what we are here for, to enforce what you guys change, 100%. That is, yeah, so Ben, can we mm -hmm. get together and get with him? Okay, okay. thank you. You guys in the lab. We'll get it up, we'll get it taken care of. Uh, one other thing I think you might want to address real quick. Uh, you and I discussed the round robin at the Coffee and Donuts. Mm -hmm. Would you expand upon that just a little bit? Well, I would advise every council member to go to Sunshine Law training, opposed to passing a resolution and make me go for them. Um, I will always go every year, but you're always more than welcome to attend. Council members cannot discuss city business on email. It is that simple. It's that simple. I know I send out informational emails to you guys, but I am not an elected member of the public. So when I send an email as a group, it says information only, do not respond. It is do not respond. So you all as elected officials cannot email three or four people at a time. You can't break it up to get to your fin final result. That is a round robin. People get, city councils do get sued. I hate saying that word, but it will, you can get in trouble for that. So my advice to council is when you communicate on email, you do not tag a quorum in there. You just don't do it. My advice is don't communicate on email at all. Because what happens is this person ties, you, you attach this person and it's a massive chain after a while. 
So anything that council ever, ever does is an open session. That that's includes issuing discipline. You can talk about discipline behind closed doors. Say, God forbid, Miss Wright does something in Miss Eagleston or someone does something and need to go and discipline that council member. They can talk about it in executive session, but the actual, I think, um, in issuing of the discipline, you're being removed, has to be an open session. So general rule of thumb, if you are elected, do everything out in open session. That's the easiest way to remember it. Anything else? I had one more thing. What? I'm sorry. He, he looked right at me. No, he's looking at me, but my head was looking at you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Nothing else? Yeah, well, I need to go ahead. <laughs> well, and along that same line, but the animals is the cats. And I do want to do something about all these feral cats. Good luck. Being fed by one person. I think we can do that real easy by changing that ordinance to say if you feed, it's right now it's if you care for an animal or home it, right? If we change it to feed, and then limit the number of cats a person can have to three, it will stop that. Because if they're feeding 15 cats, that is a total nuisance to everybody for 10 houses around. And I, I really want people not to be so bothered by that. So that's my other. Mark has a gunshot. <laughs> The, the problem with feral cats, if you put food out to feed two or three cats, every cat in the city is going to smell that food and come and eat your food, and the bowl will always be empty. You know, people's been trying to contain feral, feral cats forever, and, you know, you, you just can't shoot them. No offense to the gun shop, but you can't shoot them. <laughs> you can if you're you in the county. And the as county. long as yeah, somebody is want. feeding those cats, they're going to keep staying. Yeah. They've got to stop mm -hmm. feeding them. I need a motion for a so move. <laughs> Wake up, babe. <laughs> motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by the vice mayor. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay was the first? Yes. <laughs> Who was the second? Vice Mayor. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. I don't know what we're motioning for. To adjourn. To leave. To, to, to leave. Okay. To leave. Sure. Go home. Sure. Were you done speaking? Sure. Why not? <laughs> Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Uh, Mayor Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Eagleson? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. We are adjourned. We are adjourned.